Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Enchanting Lawyer Podcast. This is a show that we interview um, inspiring and interesting entrepreneurs from all over the world that share their ideas with us and help us uh, get our job done much better. Uh, and today I have uh, an exciting guest uh, all the way from France. I have uh, Kara Ronin with me. Kara is the founder of Executive Impressions. Drawing from more than 10 years of living an international life, she offers professional, uh, professionals a wealth of practical advice and inspirational tips to move them towards an international mindset and an amazing corporate career. She has a lot of knowledge and interesting insights into the world of business etiquette, and we're going to learn all about it. Welcome to the show, Kara. How are you today? Hi, Jacob. Thanks so much for having me. Exciting. So um, I, I'm kind of envious of you that you're in France right now because I definitely <laughs> would have wanted to be there too and enjoy the snow and everything. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, though, this year it hasn't snowed very much. Yeah, that's what I heard. But you, know, yeah, yeah. But you can drive just a little bit far into the mountains and you'll see all the snow you need, right? Yeah, exactly. Only a couple of hours by car and or even maybe less. And then, yeah, you're absolutely in the mountains and you can go skiing and everything like that. It's quite wonderful. And so um, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? And um, well, you, you're now in France, uh, in the French Alps, right? Yeah, so I live in a city called Lyon, which uh -huh. is not in the French Alps, but it's not that far from the French Alps. Um, and I am Australian, which mm -hmm. your listeners probably could have, yeah. you know, guessed from yes. my accent. <laughs> so I'm Australian, but I'm living in France at the moment. Uh, and, you know, living an international life is something that I have always been fascinated with. I've always loved other cultures and countries and languages and it's just every since I was very young I always looked at other people who who even had a different accent. They were speaking mm -hmm. English but with a different accent, say they were from the US or the UK. I would look at them with intrigue and just wonder where they came from and what was their life like and everything right. like that. So so yeah, it's it's a, it's been a long life uh, fascination for me about uh, different cultures and the international life. And it's funny because I always do that. I mean, I, you know, obviously, I have an accent myself, but I always, whenever I meet somebody um, that has some sort of an accent or, or I feel that they're from somewhere else, I, it's the first thing that I want to do is I want to know where they're coming from. Yeah, yeah is, absolutely. Which is kind of very normal. But, you know, I, before the, the show and, you know, when, when, when I first connected with you, um, I started to think about, um, you know, the word etiquette and, mm. and, and the whole thing. And, and, you know, the more the more I read about it, the more I think about it, it kind of, this word kind of gets a bad rap and mm. people think, people think that it's more of a pretentious or uh, you're trying to be, um, um, you know, above everybody else and the rules are kind of socially and morally uh, seem to be prescribed and very intrusive. And so, but I, I, at the same time, I think the concept of etiquette is really, really essential, especially now and particularly in business. So if you look at Facebook and LinkedIn and all these things that are out there with social media, kind of blurred the lines of what is appropriate and what is not, right? So mm -hmm. I'll be curious, first of all, to, to know from you, um, what is business etiquette in the first place? Okay, yeah, absolutely. And you are so right when you say that the word etiquette has a, a bad rap because it absolutely does. And that's one of the things that I am confronted with all the time. I find that people have the image that it's something that's out of date, that's a little stuffy, that's a little uh, snobby, things like that. But in reality, it's something that we have to deal with every day, especially right. in business. Uh, when you meet people, when you go to a business meeting, you're going to meet people for the first time. You, you want to be able to make sure that you give the right impression of yourself, um, develop the right professional brand. And you do that through knowing and, and having a few skills in business etiquette. Um, they're essentially social skills. I like to call them social skills uh -huh. for business. That way it's a bit clearer in people's minds and they don't really get that negative uh, association when they hear it. Uh, so, for example, it could simply be learning the right handshake. 
It could be making sure that you look people in the eye when you're talking with them, making sure that you use the right body language, everything like that, which makes up the the way we interact with other people and it helps us to, to give a positive impression of ourselves. Or in some cases, you might want to project authority or power. So you would learn slightly different skills, different social skills that would help you project that leadership type of presence in business. But it is absolutely important and very critical for for everyone to learn, especially when we're in a a bad economic climate like what we've experienced since 2008 with the GFC. And so, um, you know, one of the things that that I that I observe about uh, etiquette is that um, it's something that people don't really pay attention to as much as they should. So uh, what, are the, what do you think is so important for, uh, for people who are professionals, let's say service providers, people that are uh, in business, to pay attention to this? Absolutely. It's something that will really help everybody stand out from, from the crowd. And this is important whether you're an employee professional, uh, whether you work for a company or whether you run your own business and you're an entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you are the person people remember. Uh, And you do this by, by learning some tips and tricks on how to connect with them better, how to make that person feel like they're important and appreciated as well. So, uh, for lawyers, for accountants, right. for any you know business people like that, you are meeting with clients all the time. So your the way you interact, the way you dress, the way you present yourself is so important to make those clients want to come back to you for business. Uh, if you are looking for a job, it is so important mm-hmm. during interviews to make uh, your potential boss want to give you the job and not somebody else. Right. Exactly. And then this is so important because if you actually think about it, you can see how valuable it can be. So why don't we look at a few maybe uh, um, examples and maybe you can kind of explain how uh, you know, business etiquette skills can help people who are listening to the show right now or want to improve their, their um, performance in their professional life. Right. So concretely... Uh Business etiquette skills can help you in three ways. It can help you develop presence. Mm -hmm. It can help you develop power, which is important sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. You might want to project authority. And it can help you develop connections in business. And if you have those three elements, Mm -hmm. and this is true whether you are an employed professional or an entrepreneur, if you have presence, power and connections and you know how to create those three elements, then you will be far beyond any other job candidate, any other business person who is trying to sign the, the same client as you. So it's interesting that you mentioned that. Can, can, can you repeat those three? And then what I've done, I've prepared a couple of points that I, I use Typically, uh, and I don't know if, if it's etiquette or or it's something that flows from that, mm-hmm. but I think it kind of it kind of um, uh, we can weave it in those three uh, three elements you just mentioned. So why don't you repeat them again? So the first is presence, mm-hmm. then power, then connections. Perfect. So for example, um, what I usually do is I often after a meeting um, or sometimes even when I um, um, do some sort of a business deal with somebody, I would typically send them a thank you note. And, uh, and usually I'll handwrite it. So that's uh, one thing. So that's kind of, uh, it, it shows um, some sort of a connection, some sort of um, um, the, you know, care about, yeah. about the person that I just uh, uh, connected. The other thing is I always try to remember the names. So for example, mm-hmm. obviously I remember the names of my, of my, uh, of my employees, but mm-hmm. also people that I meet and do you know how it is like you meet somebody and then after 20 minutes you, you, you don't remember who Absolutely. they are. Absolutely, yeah, and even they, after a couple of minutes yeah. sometimes. Yeah, and then you want to talk to them again and then you don't know their name and it's so awkward. And then if you don't know their name and you ask them, it's just it feels rude. So I think it comes back to the presence element that you just mentioned because you have to be present, you have to listen. And mm-hmm. actually, and another thing is, you know, how many meetings that we have every day, people are stuck to their phones, tapping away, and they're not listening. So I try mm-hmm. to just put the phone in my pocket and not 
use it while the meeting is taking place and just focus on the presenter. And I think, again, it, that, pre, that comes back to the presence element, right? So they, Absolutely. they're all kind of yeah. connected. Just being in the moment, yeah. being with the person you're talking to. Uh, yeah. Say you're at a networking event, uh, actually focusing on that person and uh -huh. actually listening to them, not looking over their shoulder to see who else is entering the room or to see who else you could talk to who, you know, who could help you elevate yourself in your career. So it's, it's being in the moment with the person you're with and it's also – Developing that that brand, that professional mm -hmm. brand. So it also relates to developing the first impression that you want people to form about you. So knowing what outfit to wear, what body language to use. Uh, the, all of these things help you develop the professional brand or your professional reputation. I totally agree with that. And you know, I, I just remember that I, I attended um, a seminar and I remember that uh, one of the presenters, he kind of... Um, he was talking about, um, it wasn't really business etiquette, but he was talking about uh, the way we lost our, um, we lost our respect and, um, and, and just politeness in business. And he, he, I don't know if you, have you heard of the elevator rule? And so, so basically, no, I not. so the idea is that when you meet with a client or a potential business partner, um, you know, outside of your office, and you're leaving the meeting and you, you, know, you go with your, let's say I, I, met, I came with a colleague and we, we're in the elevator mm -hmm. and now you start talking, oh man, that meeting was so horrible, that guy was so rude. <laughs> so the idea is that never discuss anything until the elevator reached the floor and you're walking out of the building. Absolutely. And so maybe it's superstitious or, or, or I don't know what you call this, but this is you know, another way to keep your reputation from being hurt because like, what if somebody else heard you and say, you know what, you just don't... So try to keep that yeah. as, a, as a little bit of a, in your head, you call this the elevator rule, but it can apply That's, to anything um, when, you yeah. try, when you start thinking about talking about somebody else. Oh, yeah, absolutely, uh, especially if it's something negative. Right, <laughs> you really course, want to make sure, be careful and make sure that it's not, not possible, not even one little bit possible that anyone could overhear. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it would immediately damage your reputation. And as humans, we have a tendency to remember negative things a lot more than positive things. Uh, so if somebody hears something negative about you, then that's immediately going to damage your reputation in exactly. the as exactly. well. Exactly, and, and and again, I think um, it is connected to etiquette because you know if, if you if you make it a habit to um, to be negative and 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 talk about others uh, mm. behind their back, um, mm. then you never know when somebody else is going to hear it and um, and, yeah. and your reputation will be hurt. Absolutely. So, Carl, if you have to choose one important soft skill for a business person, a professional to have, what would it be? Okay. Well, there are. And there are many soft skills that will help you stand out that you, you know, want to, be, to have in your business toolkit um, because you're going to always be confronted with different situations. But if I had to choose just one skill, I would say the know, like and trust factor is critical to, to your business success. So getting people to know you and like you and trust you um, and this is something that I, I talk about extensively. I'm, I'm creating a video course at the moment, which is on business etiquette, and this is one of the major focuses right. of that course. Uh, but I'll explain briefly what it's about. People aren't going to work with you or they would rather work with somebody they know, like, and trust than somebody they don't. It's just natural human reaction. You're not going to want to work with somebody who you – who you don't trust, who you don't like, you don't want to be around. Uh, so it's essential that you learn how to develop that in your business interactions with your coworkers, if you're in an office, uh, with your employees, if it's you who are, who's the boss, uh, and also with your clients. Uh, and there are many elements that make up this no like, and trust factor, but Essentially, what we're talking about is we're, we're helping people feel safe around you and feel, feel more relaxed around you. And when you have those elements, they'll want to do business with you rather than somebody else. Right. So at the end of the day, it's about standing out in the eyes of the client or your boss or your, your colleagues. And I think it's so important because uh, if, you, if you can't gain that, uh, that trust, then um, you, know, you, you can't move to the next uh, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. 
So, Absolutely, yeah. So, Cara, you know, I think, um, um, you know, in-person etiquette is so important and, and what happens after we meet. But I wanted to maybe touch base in maybe um, a couple of minutes about uh, the online world, what's happening on social media. Um, you know, people are, this is a world where people are, and businesses are con concerned about brand awareness. What's going to, what are they saying about me? 24-7. Uh, you can't control it. People are talking all the time on Facebook, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And so this digital landscape is kind of, uh, it seems to me, makes it even more difficult to know whether or not you're crossing a line, um, whether you're not doing something that is good or bad. So maybe you can co comment on that because I know, I mean, I tell you what my rule is. Before I create a hashtag or I post something on Facebook or Instagram or Facebook or, or, or uh, Snapchat, I will think myself, is this going to make somebody feel good or bad? And if mm -hmm. I think slightly that it's going to be a little bit of negative and it's going to make somebody um, um, not want to continue with their day because mm -hmm. of something that I said, I'm not going to do it. You know, that's, yeah. that's kind of my rule. But I don't know. How do you, how do you see etiquette in business um, as, uh, as, as we um, engage online with people we never met? Yeah, well, it absolutely applies online, and I think a lot of people forget about that fact that it, it is it is important online as well. Uh, it, of course, when you meet people in person, there are things that you right. need to do, but online it's so important as well. And I was actually watching some of your videos before yeah. uh, we got talking today, and I really liked one thing you said on your YouTube channel in one of the videos. You said, be nice, be kind, and be useful. And I thought that was so important and so critical to, to business, to just being successful in business with your coworkers, with your clients, with whoever. Uh, and I think that rule is important to apply when you interact with people online as well. You have to remember that whatever you write online, <laughs> whether it's a Twitter, a tweet, whether it's on Facebook, or an email, whatever, mm -hmm. it is there forever. Correct. And people can find it. So if you're not proud of what you, you just write or what you intend to write, if you, if you wouldn't want to see it on the front page of a newspaper, for example, then don't post it or don't write it. Uh, so, you know, stick to the policy that, that you talked about in one of your videos that be nice, be kind and be useful to other people and you will, you will be safe interacting with other people online. And I, the reason I, I advocate for that is because um, it just feels that most people, I mean, you know, we don't, we don't want to generalize, but I think that a lot of people are trying to um, ask first and then um, offer whatever they have to offer. But they always ask first. And I think it's important to give, 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 and only then ask. And it's really important because if you start giving for no reason, you want to help somebody, you want to share content, you want to... Uh, promote somebody's book, you want to promote somebody's new course for no reason. You don't ask anything. Mm -hmm. At some point, you may need help as well. And then you can ask. And it just feels that people are just coming and emailing. And I get a lot of emails as well and say, you know what, can you help us uh, do this and this? Can, you, uh, can we do this uh, deal together? And I'm, like, <laughs> and I'm asking myself, well, why would I do that? Um, I mean, yeah. what value you don't you... even know that person. <laughs> yeah. First of all, I don't know you. And second of all, what value did you bring to me that I should step out of my way to, uh, to help you. So I think, especially in our business where we, we work with people, we, we don't, um, um, you know, we, I stopped charging for consultations uh, many years ago because okay. I felt that even if I spent 10 minutes with somebody, give them some free advice, uh, whether they hire us or not, it doesn't matter. They tried and they mm -hmm. sampled what we can offer and then they can decide if they want to, but at least they got some value and they left. And even if they didn't retain our services, they at least left with a feeling that they got some a little bit of help and maybe one day somebody else will be referred by that person. You know what I mean? So it is a form of etiquette as well because you think about others before yourself in a way. Absolutely, because you are helping to, to form a positive impression in mm -hmm. the minds of the people you, you give that value to. They then spread word of mouth, whether it's online, because that actually happens a lot more nowadays and it's much quicker sure. than speaking to people. But they spread that word around that, that you are a great person to work with, that you're warm, that you're approachable, and that you're professional as well. And that's really what you want people to say about you. Uh, it's, I also use the same approach and many other people use the same approach when they have blogs or websites. Uh, you write free articles 
on the blog or I have over a hundred articles on my blog right now. I started to get into videos last year. So Mm -hmm. just like you have a YouTube channel where you give people free. I saw your channel. We're going to link it in our show notes as well. Okay, great. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. So that's great. So let's talk about likability. I mean, I think I would like to hear from you uh, maybe one or two tips about uh, becoming more likable. Everybody wants to be liked. How would you help somebody to become more likable? Yeah, so being liked is, I refer to it as a second element. First, you need to know somebody because you're not going to like somebody you you don't even know. So you need to develop that first. But then the second element is likability and getting someone to like you. And the one of the easiest ways and the most powerful ways you can achieve this is to find a similarity with that person. And there's a, uh, there was a study done in 1970, so it was quite a, a while ago, but mm-hmm. it was around the time when, um, you know, the 1970s when people dressed like hippies, yeah. there was all that hippie culture and all that going on. Um, so there was one study done and the researchers decided to separate uh, two people. So they dressed one person as a hippie and one person as a, in straight clothes. They referred to as, you know, normal or straight clothes. They went to a college and they asked the college students on campus for a dime so that they could make a phone call. And they found that when the, the researcher was dressed just like the student they asked the money from, they got the money more than two-thirds of the time. So simply by having similar clothes to the person you are interacting with, it can make that person think, mm, he's like me or she's like me, and it can help them to like you. Uh, it doesn't just have to be the way you dress. It could be a similar background. You could like a similar type of food or have a similar hobby or, or anything you know, in, in common with the other person. But it is one of the most powerful ways to achieve likability. And I think, um, I, I think I've been following that rule for a little bit and I think it definitely works. So it's a great, mm. great, great tip. We all must it, find a way to become likable because otherwise you can't uh, build any relationship. Absolutely. And for example, for your listeners, if they're, they're professionals, so if you're going to a client meeting and you know uh-huh. your client is from a traditional industry and they wear very formal clothing, yeah. you should also wear formal clothing. Mm-hmm. If they're from a casual industry and they wear jeans and they wear maybe a shirt or even a t-shirt, then maybe you should tone your clothing down a little bit. Otherwise, you wow. might alienate them a little bit if you're too formal so you can use it to your advantage you know it's funny that you mentioned that because um, after this uh, I'm gonna finish recording the show with you Mm. Um, I have a meeting with um, uh, a a city official about a project that uh, they're doing and I I totally forgot about the meeting (laughs) and I'm if you know if you if you see me right now I'm dressed with jeans and a a blue shirt and I have uh, you know kind of these funky sports shoots and he's probably gonna come He's actually um, already sitting in the in the office. He's probably with a suit, and uh, and he's like in his probably late sixties. I, I have to find a way to um, throw uh, on a jacket or something. No, I have to find a way to um, to bridge the etiquette and explain why I'm dressed like that. Maybe uh, because I'm volunteering somewhere today and doing something good, or so so he doesn't feel that bad. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll come up with something. You know, come up with and, a, yeah an explanation. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll update our listeners in the next show um, that I'll do with yeah. you as to what I did during that. Yeah, that would be moment. interesting. Because yeah. I, I really look really like uh, like I'm in the weekend right now. But you know, <laughs> that's something to think about. Always be prepared and always have an extra jacket in your closet, which I don't have today. That's that's true. But you can overcome that. You can make that up with just the way you interact with that yeah, person. Exactly. Make them yeah. feel special as well. Yeah, we have a lot of um, fresh cookies this morning, so I think I'll just you know throw the cookies uh, in there. Uh, that we'll always see. helps. <laughs> So, Kara, as we end, come to the end of our show, I wanted to ask you one question about networking because a lot, you know, we, we all go to networking events. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, I try to do some at least a couple of times a month. Give us one or two tips to help people start a conversation with somebody you've never met. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still have that issue sometimes, but I'd like to hear your take on that. Yeah, so you're right. Starting conversations, especially with people you don't know, complete strangers can be really daunting and really scary. And you'd be surprised even people who who have been in business for years are still, you know, daunted by this, the thought of how do I start a conversation? What do I say? Um, 
So I like to tell my clients that conversations generally follow three stages. And when you meet somebody for the first time, you only need to focus on the first stage of the conversation. Um, That's usually small talk. Uh, now, that's easy to say, but what can you, you say during small talk? I, I often tell people if you choose something in your surroundings, say an object that's around you, an item of clothing or jewelry the other person is wearing that just kind of stands out or looks unique, uh, you can talk about the venue, you can talk about the, the food, Uh, the city you are in, or even the weather. That's generally what the first stage of a conversation revolves around. And that's what most people feel comfortable with. You don't want to meet someone for the first time and jump in and ask them, oh, what's your opinion on? Or "Mm, what do you think about? You don't want to go too deep, Mm -hmm. too quick, because you're going to scare that person away. So uh, concentrate the conversation and your questions around on, on your surroundings. That's the best tip I can give your listeners. I like that. That's what I usually do. Surroundings or maybe, um, uh, uh, well, if, if you know if people like sports, maybe you can throw some sports stuff in there. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, if you know they like sports. Yeah, yeah of course. If, you know. if, if it were, were yeah. me, I'm not really into sports, yeah, yeah. I would not know what to answer. <laughs> so. Very good. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, Kara, why don't you share with our listeners, um, you know, if they want to connect with you, how do we find you online, your website, and again, We'll make sure to have all the links in the show notes as well. Yeah, that would be fantastic. So if I'm very present online, I have a website that your listeners can visit and the address is www.executive-impressions.com. So there's a hyphen in between Mm -hmm. the two words. Uh, And if you visit my uh, website, then you can also join my monthly newsletter. And by being on the the list of, of people who are there, you will get um, not notice and announcements of new products and, as I mentioned before, the video course that I'm preparing at the moment, which will hopefully be released in about three months' time. Uh, it's going to be a, a really lengthy <laughs> video course, probably a couple, uh, two plus hours in length, uh, high quality video. Um, it's, it's fantastic. I'm working on the post-production of that at the moment. So I'm very busy with that. But if you go to the website, join my newsletter, then you will be the first to know when it's released, where you Perfect. can learn more tips. Perfect. I just joined myself as we speak. Oh, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> so, excellent. Thank you so much, Cara. We'll make sure we um, uh, link all these links in our show notes. And I uh, really appreciate you taking the time all the way for France to, uh, to join us this morning. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks so much, Jacob. I hope you. you have a great day. Thank you. And thank you for our listeners who tune in every week. I really appreciate your emails, the comments. And we continue to uh, try to improve the show and get you exciting guests. Have a beautiful day. And we'll see you at our next episode.